Newsflash, newsflash, you're launching Ethiopian World News. 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 Newsflash, newsflash, you're launching Ethiopian World News right here on the YouTube. And this will be our first installment in this series of important news and updates internationally, nationally, and locally concerning Ethiopian Hebrews, Hebrew Ethiopians around the world. This is our first news story right here being launched on the YouTubes. And this particular news article that was given to us and linked to us is from the Telegraph in the UK. And it's entitled, Israel Accused of Discrimination After Ending Ethiopian Immigration. And the original news story was by Bert Linfield in Jerusalem, last updated on the 5th of August, 2008. Israel has ended a three-decade-old policy of immigration from Ethiopia, saying it wants to devote resources instead to integrating Ethiopian Jews already in the country. The move evoked a furious reaction from leaders of the 120,000 strong Ethiopian Jewish community in Israel who said the discrimination and prejudice of the Israeli government would strand thousands of people in Africa and thwart family reunifications. Government spokesman Mark Regev said the step, quote, will enable us to focus more effectively and invest resources on the successful integration of Ethiopian immigrants, end quote. He added that the government was abiding by a cabinet decision in 2003 to bring to Israel a total of 17,000 Ethiopians known as Falash Mura or Falasha Mura who are descendants of Ethiopian Jews who converted to Christianity but who considered themselves Jewish. In accordance with the quota, the Falash Mura have been flown to Israel at a rate of about 300 a month since 2003, with the last group of 61 of them arriving yesterday. Israel mounted major operations, codenamed Moses and Solomon, to bring thousands of Ethiopian Jews to the country in 1984 and 1991, depicting the immigration as fulfillment of the biblical prophecy of a gathering of Jewish exiles to Zion. But the Ethiopian community of about 120,000 immigrants and their descendants is the poorest sector in the Israeli Jewish population and is beset by unemployment and school dropout rates, although there have also been success stories. In an affirmative action to make up for their impoverished background, the government has underwritten their mortgages. Ethiopian Jewish groups in Israel say there are still about 8 thousand Falash Mura in Gondor, Ethiopia, seeking to move to Israel. Quote, it is inconceivable that descendants of Jews and Jews who need to immigrate should have the door shut on them, end quote, said Danny Kasahon, director of a coalition of Ethiopian lobbying groups. Quote, there are many families who have parents or children in Ethiopia wanting to come to Israel, end quote. Quote, this is discrimination. It cannot be defined by any other word. It could be based on prejudice, said Mr. Kasahun, added, said Mr. Kasahun. Mr. Regev, however, on the other hand, denied the charge and said, there could still be family reunifications, quote, on a case-by-case -case basis, but added that, quote, 
collective mass immigration is behind us. So please do some more research on your own on this news story. Any other angles of the story, email us, link us. If there's any videos out there, link us about this important issue. If you're in the community, the Ethiopian Jewish community are concerned about this situation, recent development um, from the state of Israel, please link us about this and let us find out, you know, what we can do collectively. Collective security for surety, international morality. Education is the key. This is a very, very, very interesting turn in development. Though we can't say it was unexpected. You know, um, it's kind of clear what's going on. You know, this is a, a little commentary about the Israel accused of discrimination after ending Ethiopian immigration. It should not be a surprise to any of us who really have studied, you know, done our homework on this whole situation from its very roots to the so-called discovery of the Ethiopian Jews or the black Jews of Ethiopia. They, they go by various names. They also call them Falash Mora or Falasha Mora. You understand? Falasha Amhara. You know, so those, those Falasha who recognize their Hebrew and Biblical and Israel um, origins. You understand their history. So it's not a real big surprise. They basically have gotten what they've needed to get you understand, from the community. And mainly, besides the labor that they get, or some would say that, that you know, the, the black Jews of Ethiopia, like the new niggas, uh, you know, in Ethiopia, you know, like if you look in how, how they run these societies that are heavily dominated by like a white supremacist domination and, and clouded by bias and racial prejudice and discrimination, they've gotten what they needed from the community. I mean, they, in, in addition to, to flying out many thousands of um, Ethiopian Jews, you understand, they've also um, taken many documents, ancient uh, Beta Israel documents have also been flown on separate carrier planes, you understand, and some of these documents have never been returned to the um, to the Esoch or to the priests or the Kahinat of the Ethiopian Jewish community. They've been, you know, the documentation of the complaints that have been um, leveled at so-called uh, State of Israel authorities regarding the matter of their their barana, their parchments, their scrolls, their books, their documents that were flown out separately. One plane just had like the people on it. You understand? The next plane had mainly their books on it and when they got to the airport you know all the joy of being in the state of Israel kind of clouded the people and then when they finally asked for their scrolls they were given like uh, Jewish scrolls so they're exchanging some of the Jewish scrolls the European Jewish scrolls they've given that, this to the Falasha the Beit Israel and taking the ancient scrolls from the Beit Israel and doing a whole bunch of extensive research and study you understand so that later on they can further make their claims that you know against the, the the black Jews of the world the, the Ethiopian Hebrew Jews of the world and the Beta Israel of the world as well as to bolster up their position that they're really you know the the, the biblical Hebrew Israelites the so-called European converted um, non-ethnic Jews in a sense so this is a very important development and one should not be su surprised or shocked by it you understand hopefully this type of um, open discrimination. You understand? That's what it is. I mean, Mr. Kasahun you understand, was quite, you know, correct with that. Although maybe many of them are still reluctant to really come out, you understand, and really call it what it is. You understand? And hopefully these things that are going on and happening, you understand, we see really all things work toward the good of those who, who love Gitachin and who are called according to his purpose. You see what I'm saying? Because the discrimination that the, the black Jews of Ethiopia uh, receive when they go to the state of Israel, which is a mainly white, so-called Jewish Zionist state, is very much similar to the same discrimination that, that black people, especially the lost sheep of the house of Israel, receive over here in the Western Hemisphere. But still, in spite of the many efforts of many different groups, you understand, um, there is the uh, Bina, um, the Beta Israel. Newsflash, newsflash, you're launching Ethiopian World News. Ethiopian World News. Ethiopian World News.